Okay, we're working on PowerPoint Objective 2.1 and the first instruction tells us to open the file and I have done that, PowerPoint 2-1. And remember always the first thing you need to do is to save this file to your local computer before you begin to edit it. Don't try to edit it within the shared folder. As soon as you get it saved to your computer, the next instruction is on slide one, apply the third built-in word art style to the presentation title. So we're going to click here where we see on slide one the presentation title and when we click where the text is, then we see the placeholder open up. Now remember, anytime you want to change something in a placeholder, if you want to change everything that's within that placeholder, you just can click on the border so that the border becomes a solid line. A lot of times people will just try to click in here and just highlight the text and that's one way to do it. But it's a good trick to remember that anytime you want to change everything inside of a placeholder, just click on the border and turn that dotted line into a solid line. So it tells us in the instructions to apply the the third built-in word art style. So I'm going to have to come up here to format, format tab on drawing tools. And we find here our word art styles and it says the third style which is the lime accent color 2, outline lime accent color 2. It's that one right there. Apply it to the presentation title. The next instruction says on slide 2, so I'm going to come over here and click on slide 2. It says format the slide title as bold purple accent 4 and small caps. So I'm going to click here where the text of the title is. I'm going to click this border and I'm going to change this to bold here on the home tab in the font group. Click on bold. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to find purple, but be careful here because it says bold purple accent 4. So it's not going to be this purple down here. It's going to be the purple up here that says purple accent 4. Purple accent 4. And then it tells us to make this in small caps. And I have to click here on the quick launch arrow to get up the dialog box it gives me the option for small caps and then click OK and so we have that done and then it also tells us to set the character spacing to expanded so under the quick launch on font we can come to character spacing and here for spacing instead of normal we can simply select expanded now we could change the distance between each of the letters instead of by one point which is the default we could change it to some other value but notice here that the instruction does not ask us to change the setting it only says change it to expanded but doesn't tell us to change the number so we're going to click OK and let that default stay as it is now it wants us to use the format painter and apply the same formatting to the titles of slide 3 through 8 so anytime I want to use the format painter up here and apply it multiple times then I'm going to come up and I'm going to double click on the format painter to make sure that it stays highlighted. So double click. Now when I move away from the for, uh, format painter up here you can see that it stays highlighted. So I can over here in the thumbnails I can click on slide 3 and then just click where the text is for the title come to 4, click where the text is for the title, 5, click where the text is for the title, 6, 7, and 8. Now I have to be careful and come back up here because I'm through using that paintbrush. So I'm going to come up here and click once on the Format Painter to turn it off. Now it's turned off. If I click here on this text, see it doesn't change it to purple. Now the next instruction says return to slide 2. Now I do that first and it says to convert the bulleted list items to normal paragraphs. There's not really a setting for this. There's no place where you can go and say change it to paragraphs. But what we can do is simply turn off the bullet list. So we simply select the border here for the placeholder, come up to where the bullets are highlighted up here and just turn it off. 
that turns off any bullets and turns this back, in, back into plain old paragraphs. The next instruction, format the paragraphs into two columns and then resize the placeholder so that the columns are, are of equal length. So I'm going to make sure this border is selected. I'm going to come up and change this to two columns. And you can see now that this column on the left is longer than the column on the right. And it tells us to resize the placeholder so that the columns are of equal length. So I'm going to come down and grab this resize handle in the middle of the bottom border and just pull it up until both lists are exactly the same length. The next option says create hyperlinks from each of the following paragraphs to the corresponding slide in the presentation. So notice here that there is a bullet or at least a paragraph here for, pe for preparing for a buying trip and there is a slide here that's preparing for a buying trip. So we're simply going to create a link right here that will allow the user of this PowerPoint slide to jump directly to slide 3. So I'm going to highlight the text. Now I could come up and do insert and find the hyperlink up here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use control K and that causes the the insert hyperlink option to come open. And over here on the left side we have different options and what you want is to find a location inside this document. And then right here are slide titles and here is preparing for buying a trip which is on slide 3. Click OK. Now we're going to do the next one, traveling internationally. Control K. Here is traveling internationally. Click OK. Meeting the client, control K. Meeting the client, OK. Closing, choosing merchandise, control K. OK. And then closing the deal is the last one. Closing the deal. Click OK. Now our next instruction says edit the meeting the client hyperlink. That would be this one right here. I'm going to right click and select edit link and it tells us to display the screen tip how to comport yourself so right here is the option on the edit hyperlink dialog box here's the hyper the uh, button for screen tip so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change that screen tip to how to comport yourself click OK and click OK now what changes whenever you change the screen tip notice for instance if I hover over this traveling internationally then the little screen tip that comes up says traveling internationally but when I hover over this meeting the client notice it changes the screen tip to say how to comport yourself so that's what the screen tip means that's what's going to show in that little white box whenever you hover over something Okay, the next instruction over here is display slide 3 and do the following. Change the first bullets to green dollar signs. So here's slide 3 and I'm going to select this bullet point. If I were to select all of them like that or select the border for the entire placeholder, then it would change the bullet point indicator here for all of these including these two right here but it tells us that it only wants us to change the first level bullet points so I'm going to come over here and highlight and I'm going to come up and change this bullets and numbering I'm going to come down to customize here in the bullets and numbering dialog box and I'm going to have to just scroll up here under subset I'm going to go back up here to the basic Latin text and there's a dollar sign right there. I'm just going to insert it and the instruction says to make this a green dollar sign. So here is green. That's a green dollar sign. Okay. Now how can I get that green dollar sign down to these four? Well I could do them each of them just as I did this first one but the easiest thing to do is just come up and click on Format Painter and then come down and highlight these that you want to be the same thing and bingo you've got it the next instruction is to increase the hanging indent of the second level list to 0.5 inches 
Now there's two ways to do this. They're talking about these right here. There are some people who will just come up and drag these little indicators up here on the ruler. If your ruler is not showing, you can click on view and then turn on the ruler. That turned it off. If I click on the checkbox beside ruler, it turns it on. And when you come, if you hover over these indicators up here, it tells you what they do. But doing it up here can sometimes be fairly frustrating. The best thing to do, if you're going to change the spacing of something like this, is to just come down to the paragraph and come here to indentation and it says hanging text right here, the one that says hanging, and just change it to 0 0.5. That's the best, fastest, and most precise way to get this done. Okay, the next instruction says to display slide 8. So I'm going to click here on slide 8 and we're going to do the following. It says change the second level list to a numbered list. So I have to highlight this second level list and it wants it to be a numbered list so I'm going to come up here on the home tab paragraph group. I want to change from just a bullet list to a numbered list and then the instruction says change the numbers to purple capital letters. Well, if I click on the drop down arrow here, then here are the capital letters. But if I do that and change it to purple, it's going to change the text and everything. I don't want that. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. So I'm going to come back up here and come down to bullets and numbering. Here are the letters, and I'm going to change this to purple. And does the, yeah, the instruction says just plain old purple, not one of those accented ones. Click OK. And so now I get just purple numbers here for the, for the list. And then the next instruction is to save this work and then go to the PowerPoint 2-1 results presentation and compare what you've done with the results file. And if you have done everything as I've shown you here, then it will look exactly like the results file.